My name is Greg Warnell. My group is the Signals, Information, and Algorithms Group in the Research Laboratory of Electronics here at MIT. What I'm really interested in is making systems. And I love to look at the systems I see people trying to build in practice and uh, try to figure out how they should make them. So I like to take the problem formulations that they're dealing with, look at the fundamental limits of the systems that, that they're thinking about, and when we come up with the analysis that reveals what those limits are, it often suggests some very new architecture, some different way of doing things. For me, that's the real kick, that surprise, when all of a sudden you come up with an architecture that defies conventional wisdom. We're used to thinking about technologies often as physical devices, and there are other kinds of technologies that are, in some sense, more abstract. These are algorithm technologies. These are the technologies for manipulating information inside a system. Our research focuses on the design of the algorithm technologies that should coexist with these device technologies. Our group has some broad themes of interest. But within this broad realm, there's lots of room to innovate, lots of room to identify specific opportunities and challenges. And I encourage each student to kind of find the one that fits them best, to find a kind of problem that matches their taste and where they see an opportunity to really push ideas forward. As much as possible, I try to avoid overly steering their research directions. So I try to nurture their ability to kind of identify and choose problems. And I think that's an important part of their educational development. We have a common core of methodology and approach. And there are a variety of different applications one can put those to use in, whether it's designing a collision avoidance system for a car, designing a prosthetic, a neural prosthetic for a human, or designing a new streaming media protocol. All these seemingly disparate applications make use of a common framework of thinking and can benefit by the interaction between them. I love teaching. It's one of the things that drew me to the profession. It's frequently said that you don't really understand a topic until you actually have taught it. That's, I think, an important part of the classroom experience. There are many times when I've used the classroom teaching experience to kind of refine my own understanding of a topic, and that has directly led to research progress. What makes MIT special is it doesn't matter which laboratory you're talking about or which department you're talking about, it's full of extremely, extremely good people. And those interactions have proven extremely valuable. RLE is part of a much more bottom-up organization. And as such, the ideas come from the investigators themselves. And RLE's job is to kind of enable those ideas to happen. RLE views itself as providing the support infrastructure to enable investigators to build their own programs, to pursue their ideas. As I said, what I really like about RLE is it tries to make RLE a very friction-free environment. People can pursue those ideas easily and readily and with all the resources they can put together. I like to work quite far out. I like to work on the edge. I like trying to imagine what technologies will be relevant 20 years from now. But I like to start by asking about the problems people are thinking about today. And so by looking at the problems people are trying to think about today and analyzing those, you can start to extrapolate forward and think about uh, what does that imply about the architectures of the future. What drives my research is the idea that that we can actually make a difference in, in society, that we can actually develop a technology that works its way through the research process, gets developed to the point where it actually people start building products based on it, and it starts to influence 
the way people live in positive ways. That's, that's always the holy grail. What I love most about what I do is that there are really no boundaries. If I see an opportunity to make a difference through my research in almost any discipline, I can go after it. And that's a function of, of MIT broadly, but also RLE in particular, which really encourages investigators to go and find those new opportunities, see where there's an opportunity to really change the world. I like living in a professional environment like this without boundaries. And I like being able to train students in an environment like this and have them absorb that culture. And I think that's what makes RLE special, makes MIT special, and makes this the best job in the world.